Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and earlier this year I posted a video about the beta version of Home Builder 3. So I wanted to create this video to explain how the process is going and what to expect with the next release of Home Builder. At the end of the video, I talked about a few things I was working on before I could release the official version of Home Builder. Those tasks include tutorials and documentation, 2D layout views, migrating the extended asset library, manufacturing, and geometry nodes. Now, I've made good progress on all these tasks, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. But of course, Blender 4 has been released, which is a major release, and some changes needed to be made to get Home Builder working with this version. So to stay up to date with Blender, I'm rolling the version number to Home Builder 4, which unfortunately only works with Blender 4 since I'm using some specific features to that version, but I think it's well worth it. So let's go over the progress that I made and see how Home Builder works with Blender 4. So to start out for tutorials and documentation, here in the About interface under the Training tab, I have this online documentation. And this task is never going to be finished because creating documentation and tutorials will be an ongoing process. But for the official release, I wanted to at least have this platform set up for me to update and maintain all of the training material for Home Builder. So this is a good start, but this is something that I'm going to continue to work on as I develop Home Builder. The next task is 2D layout views, and this is a big task, but it is so important for professionals. They need the ability to create technical documentation of their designs with annotations and dimensions. And in order for this to work, their designs need to be accurate. And so I've had for a while now the ability to display dimensions while you're drawing out your walls. You can type in exact values and this works really well for creating an accurate drawing but i've changed the way the dimensions work to where i can now display them in a lot of other areas so here if you're adding in your doors and windows you'll see that i'm displaying the dimension to where that's located on the left and the right and also displaying the size of the asset that you're placing and so that's really helpful for being able to create your designs accurately but these are not only available in the placement mode, but you can add your own dimensions to the design. So here in the view tab, Home Builder adds this new panel for layout views. And at the top, there's a couple tools here to where you can create your own plan or elevation dimension. And here, if you click on elevation dimension, you can see you can just move your cursor over where you want to dimension and it will accurately display the dimension based on your cursor placement. And the nice thing about these is that these are just standard Blender objects that are using a geometry node. And so here if we go to the geometry nodes tab. You can see there's this whole structure that's used to define the geometry for the dimensions. And Home Builder users don't need to understand how all of the geometry nodes work, but there are some inputs for these geometry nodes that are shipped with Home Builder. And so here, if we wanted to change the location of this, we can just use all of the standard Blender tools to where we could snap to locations. And if we wanted to, we can right click with that dimension selected to get access to the properties for that dimension. And so this shows an interface where you can change various different things about how that dimension is displayed. So we can change the leader length, we can adjust the text size, the arrow size, all sorts of different things to determine how this dimension is displayed. And so here, if we add in a few more dimensions here, you know, one, notice that, again, you can just, you know, move these around using all of the common Blender commands that you would expect here. But if you wanted to update properties about these, you can update information for all of these dimensions. So here, if I select all of these, right click, let's say I want to change the leader length here for all of these. I can specify a value and I can also check this box to update all of the selected dimensions. And so when I click OK, you can see all of those dimensions are being modified. And here these are just created based on a simple curve. And so if I select on one of these and type tab, you can see that this is just a curve object to where I can move these points and it will show the dimension between the two points of our dimension. So you can see you can snap two areas in the drawing and it's just a really quick way and a really cool geometry node to be able to quickly place dimensions in your design. And since this is just a standard Blender object, it will render just like anything else. You can animate it, you can change the material that's assigned to it, you've got a lot of functionality here. But if you wanted to create a layout view here in the Layout View tab, you have the ability to add views. So right now we're just looking at our model space. This is just the 3D model of our design. 
but Home Builder comes with a few different commands to be able to create another view. And so if we want to create a plan view, we can select that and that's just going to give us a top down view and it's automatically going to label the walls based on the name of the wall that we've assigned it and also automatically add some dimensions for us. But of course, we can always add additional dimensions to this view. And you'll notice here that this is actually a new scene that was created that just links the geometry from our model scene into this one. And so we can always get back to our regular model space and make any modifications. And if we want to view the plan view, we can see it in this here. And so all that's happening here is I'm creating a orthographic camera and I'm also appending this title block, which this is just a very simple title block that's being used, but it is parented to the camera. So it's just going to be any sort of text information that we want included. And these title blocks can be modified where you can include your company name, project information, anything like that. But if you need to create any additional dimensions, you can, of course, just use the standard command. So here, if we wanted the plan dimension, we can select and hold down control to just snap between different points in our design. And of course, if we need to modify this again, we can go into tab or type tab to go into edit mode and then we can move these dimensions around. So a plan view is a pretty common view that needs to be created for your designs, but you also may want to create elevation views for each wall. And so for home builder, we have this add 2D elevation views, which looks at each wall that you created and just automatically appends that information to the new scene that was created with the camera and the title block already included. And then of course, there's going to be some common properties that you need to adjust. So if you want to change the page size, you can do that. If you want to change the drawing scale, you can adjust how much of that model fits on the page. And then I'm using freestyle currently to render out the lines of this page and you can enable or disable that option by clicking this button. Then you can also change a few different properties from the visible line thickness to the hidden line thickness, which will display as a dashed line. And there's a few other options if you want to include a transparent background. If you want to create a white page, then you can just specify to include a white background on the page, which really just sets up some nodes for compositing to where it will render out the transparency areas as white. But you'll notice here, let's go ahead and change our visible line thickness to one and let's turn off our hidden lines by typing zero there. We can also hide the returns. So these areas here that's showing the return of the wall, we can also turn those off if we don't want to include those in our view. And then here, if we click render, that's just going to do a standard blender render, but include all of the dimensions and freestyle lines for this one view that we have here. Now, these drawings can still be a little time consuming to create. So with the extended asset library, there's going to be some additional commands that load into this menu that will allow you to create specific views for kitchens, baths and closets which will automatically include all of the common dimensions that you're going to need along with a more detailed title block that can be used with your company name and project information included. And that brings me to my next task, which is migrating the extended asset library. The first release of the extended asset library was basically a bunch of additional assets that load into the home builder interface. So here they would be just additional decorative objects that you can use or materials. And that's nice, but I didn't want the extended library to just be assets. There are companies like iMesh, Polygon, and Blender Kit that already do a really great job at this. I wanted the paid version of Home Builder to be an entire workflow for professionals to be able to create their designs quickly, accurately, and generate professional output for their clients. So first, I'm going to be creating new libraries specifically for kitchen, bath, and closet designers. And so here, we're going to have some new libraries that will not only contain a bunch of new assets, but they're also going to snap together in a more logical way based on the type of space that you're designing. So for closets here, you can fill walls with multiple quantities. Maybe you don't want to fill the wall. Maybe you want to have uh, different snapping points that snap to the left or the right, or maybe into the center of the wall. Maybe you want to type the dimension of the product that you're adding. There's all sorts of different functionality that can be included to make the process of designing that space easier. 
even with the ability of adding specific shelves that show you the dimensions of where they're going to be located, different accessories that might need to be added for that space. And so you're not only going to get these new assets, but you're also going to have the automated placement functionality and some commands that will automatically create the plan and elevation views for these spaces with dimensions automatically included, along with a variety of different title blocks that you can modify to fit your needs. Now, this is something I'm still working on, but anyone who's purchased the extended asset library from my site will automatically get access to these features. So I'll be releasing more information about this when it's available. So the next two tasks I've been working on is manufacturing and geometry nodes. And these go hand in hand. I've already talked a little bit about geometry nodes, but these are actually being used throughout all of HomeBuilder. HomeBuilder ships with some default nodes that you can use, and you don't have to understand how they work. Like I showed before, you can just create a plan dimension by just clicking a few points in your design, but they're also being used in the library. So here, if I go to the kitchen library and just add in a simple cabinet, all of this is actually created with geometry nodes. And here, if I select it and right click and go to the prompts here, we can actually enable to show the cage because this cage or this bounding box for this product is again, just a geometry node object. And that makes it really nice because you can use all of Blender's functionality when working with these. So I can type G to grab, I can type R to rotate, I can type S to scale. And I don't recommend you use the scale option. You can use the dimensions here to enter in the exact sizes of your cabinets, but all of the parts in here are actually just node structures. And the way that this ties into manufacturing is that I'm able to create simple inputs or properties specific to a cut part of a cabinet. So a part has a length, a width, and a thickness. And since I'm standardizing that information, I can use that to generate reports and export information for manufacturing. Now there's a lot more to how I'm utilizing geometry nodes in Home Builder, but that really deserves its own video. I'm also going to be creating a post on my website about the few fixes and things that need to be wrapped up for the official release. So links will be posted down in the description for that. The last thing that I want to say is an apology for how long it takes me to develop this. If you've been following this project, you know that I've been working on this for quite some time. And I am a single developer, and I'm not trying to develop something as quick as possible. I'm trying to develop something to the best of my abilities. I want this to be as good as or better than the industry standard software in this space, specifically around kitchen, bath, and closet design. I really appreciate everyone's positive feedback here on YouTube and on Discord, and I'm committed to developing something that significantly improves designers' workflow. And I appreciate everyone for sticking with me as I develop Home Builder. Now I'm going to have more information out soon, so subscribe to this YouTube channel for notifications, and I'll talk to you all soon.